how do you deal with people that are criticizing you online, either if it's justified or if, if it's unjustified? Yeah, how do I approach someone who criticizes me? And if they criticize me in a justified way, then I want to repent of it. And I listen to some of my criticism because I believe in many, critic many critics, there's a seed of truth that can help you see a blind spot, even a partial blind spot. And I encourage people, I said, don't get so defensive about your critics. Look at them as a free research team. I mean, they're giving you free insight on your blind spots. Now, they may, on a scale of 1 to 10, call it a blind spot that's an 8. And it may be a blind spot that's a 2. But if there's a little truth to that, and you can discover a deficiency in what you're saying or doing, I think you're a you're a blessed man to have those critics. And I have found... Uh, nuggets of truth and helpful insight from a lot of critics. I, I never tell the critic. I didn't even know them. And I thought, you know what? That That is right. We should say this differently. That is right. We need to do this better. That, that's good. And so I think if they're justified, even 10% justified, I think it's, it's good to learn from them. When it's just blatantly wrong or even mostly wrong to where it's extremely wrong, I think we bless them. And, and we don't bless what they're saying, but... More times than not, they're trying to be faithful to Jesus. And I try to take a step back and go, they don't understand me. They don't meet me. They, they haven't met me. They don't know my, uh, my presentation of that area. They've heard it from somebody who swears they know it firsthand, but it isn't the truth, what I believe. But I look at the guy and say, you know what? The guy's more times than not trying to be faithful to Jesus. He loves the Bible. He loves the kingdom. And I just want to bless him. I mean, we'll probably be, probably be dear friends forever in the resurrection for billions and billions of years. And you only got a few minutes, you know, maybe a decade or two where, you, where you're at odds. So I try to take a step back at the big picture and not take it so personal. Because at the end of the day, if it's an unjustified uh, criticism, it doesn't hurt what God thinks. And what God thinks about what I'm doing or what you're doing is what really determines if it goes forward and succeeds. And so it really doesn't hurt the progress, not really, uh, in the way that God wants it to progress anyway. And so we can get all defensive, get our feelings hurt, and we can exaggerate how powerful their criticism is. I mean, when someone criticizes you, it seems so big, but the truth is 99.9999999% of the body of Christ doesn't care what that person says about you, and they don't even care about what you're doing. <laughs> it's so small. It's all so small. So I've tried to main up, maintain a posture, having a big picture, uh, seeing the big picture, seeing that they probably have genuine zeal for the Lord, and they just don't know what I believe or what I do, and knowing it's not that big a deal anyway. So if I can stay in a posture of blessing, then I'm thinking more about Jesus and His Word than thinking about my critics. Then I can have a vibrant spirit, a happy heart, and I can keep growing in the Lord.